so let me go through this move. Uh, like I said, it's not something that you will probably ever see me here manage this style trade. That's why I'm very mindful of the risk when I first jump into it and why I really try and stay at a small level and within my risk tolerance. Um, but it's a very viable way to manage these trades. And like I said, a lot of the times when it changes directions, like I said, or when you can start to see that the volatility is just not going to work in your favor, it's a great way to flip it around and then have the theta decay instead work in your favor rather than working against you. So once again, we are in the 3860. We are looking for the break of this level to continue. It didn't. Once it started to pop up and it looked like things were going to reverse, that it wasn't going to break those levels and we could see a bounce back up. But the idea was to then turn this from a long two contract put and add on one contract of something like the 3900 or the 3905 put and then turn this into a put credit spread, something that benefits from chop or a bounce up. And at the time I took this picture, which wasn't too long after that bounce to the upside started to occur. And I was like, oh geez, this looks like it's gonna reverse on us. The premium on that 3905 call, as you can see here, was around 230. So even if we did one contract, right? Because we don't wanna do, or at least I wouldn't, I wouldn't wanna do two contracts and have double the risk out there on this trade idea, right? Because two contracts on, sorry, let me get this back to where they're even. <laughs> get to one, there we go. If we did two contracts on this, right, our risk is like 8,000. No, no way I would even say do that. So personally, the way I would look at it, and if you did that, you know, arguably you could narrow the spread, right? Because it's 65 cents on two contracts. So you could have done something like the 38.95 and had a, a bit smaller of a spread. Um, but it would still be probably a risk greater than the 4,000. So that's why personally, what I would do if I was managing back out of this is I would sell to open one contract and have the premium on that contract I sell to open cover the entire risk of the two contracts that are my long put. So I'm in my long put for 65 cents. When I take into consideration that I hold two contracts, it's a total risk of $1.30. So if I open the 3905 put, it's bringing me on, based on the market at the time, a 230 credit, which means I have a dollar credit left over. Um, and so now all of a sudden, even though I have a very wide amount of risk out there, I've turned my trade back to where it still has the possibility of a profit as long as it stays out of the money and that theta decay then turns back around to work in my favor. From there, right, not long after when that bounce up occurred here and we started to get right back up to the highs, or even as you can see here, where we're currently at, notice the value went from 230 now to 45 cents. So all of a sudden, just the credit in that one strike alone that was originally 230, is now showing a profit of a dollar 85. Well, that dollar 85 versus the full risk, keep in mind the strike still has eight cents of value, but let's just say we want to cover the entire risk. Let's say it's worth zero. The dollar 85 of profit that we currently see covers the entire risk of a dollar 30 that's tied up within the two contracts of the 3860 put. So in total, we have about a 55 cent profit on everything locked in. Now, once again, you could just look to day trade out of it. It would count you two day trades because you opened the puts here and you have this one. Arguably, I guess you could do one day trade and just close the short put, right? That's one way to kind of keep your day trades lower is just close the short put and then leave that back out there as a runner again. But if you're trying to avoid the day trades completely, the way that you get this $4,000 risk back off the table is by taking one more profit recycling step and opening the 3910 put. Notice how that risk went from $4,000 to $20, right? If uh, technically I was opening all these in the same order ticket, and that's because your brokerage account is now looking at this as a five point debit style vertical spread and as a long put. So it reduces that risk again. However, because we opened this for a 230 credit, 
right? We need to take that into consideration. So 230 credit on the 3905 put when paired with opening the 3910 put now at 55 cents means that we've locked in $1.75 of credit on this natural debit spread, right? So worst case scenario, just on these two contracts, we're walking away at the $1.75. If the market pukes and we get back down to 3,900 into the close, we have a bonus profit of five additional dollars. But once again, we still have a risk out here of our 3,860 put. So what does that mean? Well, the $1.75 of profit here that we took now covers the $1.30 of risk that we out have out here on both contracts. So it covers the entire risk and nets us a 45 cent profit overall. So now, worst case scenario on all these strikes combined, you walk away with 45 cents. You have a bonus profit of $5 here if the market does decide to puke back down into the close. And if it does manage to get one of those 100 point plus point rains, maybe it just doesn't happen until the end of market, right? Like the last few hours, that sometimes is the case. I'm not holding my breath for today, however. But let's say it is. I'll never say never in this market. Well, then you have the $5 bonus profit potential on this, and you still might have the option to still put on that cover order or take some action here on the long puts if you should so choose to. That also could lock you in more of a profit. Either way, though, the important thing about this management move is, one, it gave you a second chance on this trade, flipping it from a loser back into a winner, and two, that capital that was tied up in that second part of management is now recycled back into your account along with the small profit you're locking in. So you flipped it around, you got that second chance on a trade and it worked out. And now all the capital that was tied up is back into your account and you're good to go. And of course, all of those steps are without technically day trading anything. So if the market started to revert, so let's say you took that action, maybe it bounced up a little bit and you're being greedy or all of a sudden you took that action and it went up to here, but then it's starting to reverse again, 100% you could all of a sudden still look to buy the 39.10 and reduce that risk once again if you're concerned it's gonna drop back off. Absolutely. And as long as ideally you open the 39.10 for 230 or less, it will lock you in a profit. Because like I said, when you open these strikes, if the move is stalling on, if especially if you're jumping in when there is that little bit of volatility, usually if it keeps going in your favor, that's fine because the premium's still spiking and you lock in those profits. Um, at least that's been my experience in the past trading it. That's why I didn't mind the entry or anything else. But any sort of stalling or bounce, usually that premium can start to rip back out. It doesn't mean it can't show up again, but it will start to disappear on you. And so if you can time opening that strike and it's still kind of bouncing or at the very least it's stalling, even if you think it could roll over, usually unless they're trying to keep the premiums in there, which could be a sign that it is going to roll over, right? But usually that premium has already started to move away just like it has and you're far out of the money put. And so you can usually you know, recoup that capital or whatever else. But the main point would be that if you did take that action to reduce your risk, ideally on the new spread that you're creating here, you make it so that it still has a valid profit potential, right? Because what you wouldn't want to do is have this open for 230, the market moves lower, and then for whatever reason, you open this for like $10, let's say. Now, <laughs> I think you probably should have taken action prior to that, if that's what you're seeing. But let's, let's just pretend that's the case. Well, 10 minus 230, is a 760 cost basis on a five point spread. So that doesn't leave you with any positive profit potential on the spread if the market in fact puked and went below 3,900. So those are things to be mindful of, but absolutely you can take that action and still prevent the pattern day trading rule. It's, that's the fun about profit recycling. But that's my time guys. I hope that management action made sense. Um, like I said, it's probably not one that you will ever see me actually implement in here because of the capital risk involved in it. But I wanted to share it with you guys so that way you understand there are ways to be able to give yourself a second chance on some of these trades and manage back out of them. Um, and certainly that's not the only way you can profit recycle to manage. There are a lot of different ways and we'll 
I'll certainly take those ways when it makes sense for the capital risk tolerance that's in line with me and what I want for the account. Um, but for those of you with larger accounts or for those of you familiar with those wide credit spreads from Cody strategy, here are ways that you can still complement it and manage that what appears to be a losing trade right on my end and manage it back into a winning trade and still, you know, sometimes a relatively short amount of time in the market. And like I said, for those wanting the strategy and stuff, this is part, just part of what I will be teaching on Saturday more in depth. So if you guys really want to try and fish for yourself on this strategy going into next year, certainly consider the class because it's the ways that I've adopted profit recycling for both trading in as well as out of volatility. As always, may the trade be with you, my fellow Jedis. 